Good afternoon. Uh, today I'll be talking about the stream cipher atom uh, that employs a short internal state as well as a double key filter. Uh, now the main question to consider over here is uh, why or how a stream cipher with a short internal state is any different from a stream cipher with a longer internal state, for example. Now in Asia Crypto 2001, Alex Pirukov and Adi Shamir published their seminal paper on time memory data trade-off attacks. And one of the main conclusions of that paper was that um, for a stream cipher to be secure against TMD trade-off attacks, the size of its internal state must be at least one and a half to two times the size of its secret key in bits. Uh, this was considered to be the rule of the thumb for many years until FSE of 2015, during which Amnecht and Mikhailev proposed to stream, stream cipher Sprout, whose internal state had size equal to the size of its secret key. Now, in spite of this, uh, Sprout did not succumb to generic TMD trade off attacks like the ones described by Pirukov and Shamir. And at the same time, uh, it occupied much uh, less area in hardware when compared to other stream ciphers that offered uh, the same security levels. Now, let us try and understand why it was considered uh, a, a rule of the thumb that uh, for a stream cipher to be secure, its internal state had to be one and a half to two times the size of a secret key. Now, we all know that uh, any stream cipher is a uh, finite state machine. So we have these states SFI, uh, which are updated at every clock cycle by this uh, function G. And let F be the function that maps any state SI to a key stream vector of the same length. Now, cryptanalysis in this case reduces to inverting this one way function F at any of the points CI. In other words, given ZI, we try to invert this one way function at any one of the points to get the state SI. And if uh, the update function G is invertible, we can invert SI to get all the way back to S1, and then we can invert the mixing function to get the key. Now, the idea suggested by Birukov and Shamir to do this was to construct offline tables, which the attacker could then use in the online stage to find the key. So the idea was as follows. So the attacker chose, let's say, M number of random states from the internal state space of the stream cipher, and then iterated this function F at all T number of times. And then he stored the endpoints of this table, uh, endpoints of this chain in the table. So after having done so, what the attacker did he, is that he covered a fraction of the state space in one table. Now in the online stage, the, the attacker tries to look for a given key stream segment in the table. And what he does is he tries to apply the function f multiple number of times to see if uh, uh, the iterated function over the key stream vector appears in the table. Let's say he finds it after I, I, I iterations of application of the function f. What he then does is goes back to the beginning of the chain and then applies the function f total of uh, t minus one minus i times to find the pre-image of the key stream vector in the function f. Now, uh, the author showed that this leads to a trade-off curve of the form tm squared and d squared equal to n squared with the limitation that t had to be larger than d squared. Over here, t, m, and d denote uh, time, the memory and data complexity of this algorithm. Capital N is of course the size of the state space and the offline complexity P is given as capital N over D. Now, a typical point on this uh, trade-off curve is one where capital T and capital P are both equal to N over two, uh, N to the power two over three, which are both less than N. Now let K, capital K be the size of the key space. And then if we choose capital N equal to capital K, or in other words, if the size of the internal state of the cipher is equal to the size of the key, then this of course is a valid attack because both the online and the offline complexities are less than K, which is the complexity of exhaustive set. Therefore the authors pro uh, proposed that capital N should be at least K square. 
uh, or in other words, the size of the internal state should be at least twice the size of the key. If this were to be so, then it would be impossible to find the point on the straight off curve where both capital T and capital P are less than K, which is the complexity of exhaustive search. So the main idea behind Sprout was to make the state update function G such that any function F mapping the internal state to, to the key stream vector also required uh, the secret key as, in, as input. And so it would not be possible to construct a function F that maps state to key stream without the input of this extra information, which is the secret key. Now this made the effective state size of the cipher around 160 bits, which was of course twice the size of the key and therefore uh, a generic TMD attack like the ones described by Birukov and Shamir can be avoided. Now this is the structure for Sprout and those who are familiar with uh, the structure for the grain family of ciphers uh, will probably recognize this. So it uh, consists of a nonlinear register and the linear register connected by an XOR gate. Uh, Sprout additionally employs a round key generation function that continuously updates the state by XORing to the update of the NFSR function over here. And this is the reason why it is not possible to construct a function that maps the, only this uh, internal state to the key stream vector without, uh, without the input of the key. So there were many cryptanalytic attempts on Sprout, the most devastating of which was proposed by S. Jin and Kara at SAC of the same year, I think. And the problem lies in the, no, in the non-linear key generation, or the round key generation function that is employed by Sprout, which as you can see is a product of the key bit and the sum of certain bits from the register. So this kind of turns the design on its head so we've already seen that it's not possible to uh, construct a function that maps only state to key stream uh, for Sprout at least. But the attackers observed that there is a class of states, a class of weak states for which this sum is zero for 40 consecutive iterations. Now, when this happens, the contribution of the secret key to the state update function is essentially zero. And for all these class of weak states, it's now possible to devise a function that maps only the internal state to the key stream. It turns out that all such states are easy to enumerate. And so in the offline phase, all the attacker does is to build a list of all such states and the corresponding key stream vectors that they produce and store it in a table. Uh, in the online stage, if the key stream segment exists on the table, the attacker can form a set of polynomial equations in the secret key and uh, the state variables. And turns out that uh, this set of equations uh, can be solved efficiently to give us the secret key. In the end, the attack requires only two is about 33 steps and only 770 terabytes of memory, which is practical with respect to both uh, time and space. So in FEC of 2017, the same authors proposed the stream cipher plantlet, which pretty much uh, fixed all the problems that Sprout had. Now, after the SAC attack, it was crystal clear for, that for any such design to survive, the key, the round key function had to be linear. And so in plantlet, the authors changed the round key function to k of t, of t mod 80. And after this, uh, there, were, there was no longer a possibility that uh, weak states would exist. And so a previous attack could be prevented. And there were other small design tweaks made. For example, uh, in order to avoid the LFSR falling into the all zero state, the attackers changed uh, the state update function during the key stream phase little. And furthermore, they increased the size of the LFSR to 61 bits, which uh, took the uh, the total in size of the internal state to 101 bits. Uh, this was mainly done to prevent uh, guess and determine attacks of the types reported by LIMO and uh, Naib and Crypto of 2015. Furthermore, they imposed another restriction. The total amount of key stream bits extractable for each key IV pair was limited to two to about 30 bits. Now, in FSC of 2020, uh, 
near collision attack was reported against plantlet. Okay, so the main idea was as follows. Uh, at T1 and T2, B2, time intervals, uh, both multiples of AT. And the authors observed that if LT1 and LT2 were internal states of, pro, uh, of plantlet that differed in only the 43rd LFS allocation, then these states produced uh, the key stream vectors ZT1 and ZT2, the difference of which had zero or one in 45 positions with probability one. So let us call this pattern P. And uh, the reason why this happens is that uh, the output function H that produces uh, the key stream bit in plantlet is uh, a Boolean function of 17 bits. Whereas the entire state is of size 101 bits. So when a single LFSR difference propagates uh, one cycle to the left, so uh, many times it so happens that uh, this difference sits on a registered location that does not provide any input to the output function. And so for all, all such um, time intervals, uh, the key stream bit produced by the two states have, have to be equal with uh, probability one. And this happens for 45 uh, clock cycles. And therefore, uh, the differential trail uh, has um, zero or one with probability one in 45 positions. However, notice that the opposite is not true. If uh, uh, two key stream vectors, ZT1 and ZT2, differ with the pattern P, then it is not necessary that uh, they are produced by internal states that differ in the 43rd location. So in the paper, uh, the authors proved that given the key stream limitation imposed by the designers of plantlet, the probability that uh, this situation occurs, that uh, we get two internal states that differ only by E43, probability that th this occurs is around two to the power minus 55. And so the attacker repeats the process for two to the power 55 different randomly generated IVs after which you can expect to get uh, key stream vectors generated by the state difference of E43 at least once. And once this happens, uh, the attacker can again formulate a system of polynomial equations in the state and their secret key variables and solve them efficiently to get the key. We now come to the construction of our design, which we will call Atom. Uh, note that the main design philosophy has been to react to previous attacks. And uh, to reason uh, within ourselves how uh, uh, to provide uh, best solutions that counteract these attacks. So this is what we came up with. So Atom is a stream cipher with uh, a state size of 159 bits and 128 bit secret key. So we have a nonlinear register of 90 bits, a linear register of 60 bits, and a decimal up counter of nine bits. So initially, the IV and some constants are loaded onto the, on, on the registers. And system, the finite state machine, is allowed to execute for 511 cycles without producing a key stream bit. So in this respect, you can see that the structure of Atom, at least during the initialization phase, is quite similar to that of Plantlet. So what happens after initialization is quite interesting. Now the LFSR, the 60-bit LFSR and the, and the nine-bit decimal counter combine to, get a, to give us a bigger LFSR of size 69 bits, which is updated uh, linearly. The last seven bits of the LFSR, let's call it D, determines which key bit is added to the NFSR update function over here. Atom uses an additional key filter, that is uh, K, T mod, K of T mod 128, so it kind of uses two key filters to update uh, the internal state at every clock cycle. So the remaining section, uh, or the remaining section of the presentation, uh, we will try to prove, or we'll try to explain why both the key filters are necessary for the security of, uh, of this stream cipher in particular. Now the KD filter, what it does is basically prevent a near collision attack like the one proposed against Plantlet. In plantlet for a single bit difference in the LFSR, we had seen that 
the, res the resultant uh, key stream difference had zero or one in 45 positions with probability one. In Atom, this figure is only 18. Uh, this means that, that the attacker will have to spend more computational resources to identify or to ascertain whether a given key stream difference has emanated from a particular uh, single bit LFSR difference or not. And this kind of pushes the total complexity of the near collision attack to the one required to solve two to the power 141 equation systems, which is of course much larger than the exhaustive search. Now, uh, so one may wonder why uh, this figure for Atom is only 18, given the fact that uh, Atom has a uh, much larger internal state. Now for Plantlet or any other uh, stream cipher with a green structure, uh, any difference at the end of the LFSR is shifted uh, leftwards by at most one bit in the next cycle. However, in Atom, it is different because uh, the last seven bits also can uh, also control which key bit is added onto the update function. So, so potentially one may have the case when for, for which a, a single bit LFSR difference also introduces a difference in the NFSR in the next clock cycle. So as a result, any difference in the last seven bits of the LFSR gets diffused into the internal state very quickly. And uh, even if uh, there is a difference uh, not in the last seven bits of the LFSR. Consider a difference in, in, the, in any internal bit of the LFSR. This difference is fed back to the last LFSR bit in uh, less than 13 cycles through the LFSR update function. So this being the case, any difference in the internal, sta in the internal uh, state of the LFSR gets diffused into the entire inter internal state very, very quickly. And this prevents uh, a differential trail of good enough probability being formed. So one may naturally ask why the second key filter, this K of T mod 128, why this is necessary. So in order to show why this is necessary, we will uh, consider a variant of Atom, which does not employ this second filter. And we will show that this variant of Atom, which does not employ a second filter, will show a very simple T and D trade off attack. Now, we first observe that there exist weak LFSR states for which D, that is the last seven bits of the LFSR, takes a value from this set uh, 1, 2, 4, or 1, 2, 4, 8, up to 128 for capital T successive iterations. Now, when this happens, this, that the set of key, uh, the, the set of key update and the set of key bits that updates the internal state has cardinality only seven. It, it only consists of the key bits K1, K2 up to K128. Now, when this happens, just like in the TMD attack against Prout, we can think of constructing a function that maps the state, the internal state to the key stream vector that requires only seven bits of uh, key as input. Now, the idea is we store all these states and key stream bits in a table and in the online state, we look for the key stream and try to solve for the state and the key. Now, note for this D to have, to take values only from the set for capital T successive iterations, we need that the LFSR, into, uh, the initial LFSR state satisfy this system of linear equations. Now, this is a linear equation with the uh, rank T plus six, which means that there are total of two to the bar 63 minus T LFSR, in, LFSR in initial states satisfies these conditions. Now, since the system is linear, all these states can be easily enumerated. And the idea is to store in a table all these states and uh, the, the key stream vectors that it produces. So we store in a table, so in the offline state, we store in the table, all such internal states, all, all the two to the bar 90 NFSR states, all the two to the bar seven keys, and all the two to the power 63 minus T weak LFSR states and the corresponding key stream bits that it produces. Uh, the offline complexity is around two to the power 160 minus T and uh, memory complexity in bits is around 160 times that. And in the online stage, 
the, uh, the attacker will simply look for these keystream bits in the table and then extract the corresponding internal state and try to solve for the key. So it was shown in the paper that uh, a total uh, online complexity uh, in this exercise will result, uh, result to around 2 to the power 173 minus t. And given the offline complexity is 2 to the power 160 minus t, uh, for a value of t around 60, both of these complexities are less than 2 to the power 128, uh, which is the complexity of the gossip search. So this is why there's this additional kt mod 128 filter is necessary. When we have the KT mod 128 filter, this ensures that any function that maps key and the state to the key stream bits, to, to the state to any T key stream bits, we cannot uh, formulate this function with less than capital T secret key bits. And so, so this attack is automatically prevented. So in the, in the paper, we go through other security arguments. Um, you know, for example, uh, the number of initialization runs is set to 511, which ensures that the LFSR enters the second stage with uh, the value 511 or one FF in the last nine bits. And this kind of ensures that the LFSR never gets stuck in the all zero state. So we also argue extensively with respect to security against linear differential and guessing determinant attacks. Uh, we request uh, the readers to refer to the paper for more details. So we implemented the circuit of our construction and hardware. Uh, a total of uh, three Sanu cell libraries were used of different feature sizes. And we compared our construction to other stream ciphers that provide 128 bits of security, like Green 128, Cravium, uh, and uh, AS encounter mode. Uh, and in this slide, we present only results for the open source library NAND gate 45. You can see that all the ciphers that are for 128 bit security are in blue, blue background. And we can see that with respect to hardware area, energy and power consumption, Atom compares favorably to all the other ciphers that uh, offer 128 bits of security. So this being, brings me to the end of our presentation. I hope you found it both informative and interesting. So in case of you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to contact any of the authors by email. Thank you.